Well, hello. Welcome to Algebra 1 Lesson 30 from Saxon, 3rd uh, edition. And this lesson is going to cover a couple of things. The first thing is um, taking words and making them into a mathematical or an algebraic expression or equation. All right, and so I've posted on here on this page some um, common things um, and some examples for you. So I know these here at the top are a little fuzzy, um, but these are much clearer. <clears throat> a number minus six, nine less than a number, subtract 10 from a number, a number decreased by five, Joe is nine years younger than, jo Jenna's salary is lowered by, all right, so these are subtraction um, expressions, so these in red, these are some of the key words that you know, if you see those, that's going to mean subtract. All right, <clears throat> now if we say 6 minus a number, it's going to look like this, 9 less a number. Now what's the difference in this one and this one? This one says less than a number, so it's the number and 9 less than that. This one says 9 less a number, so 9 minus a number. All right, subtract a number from 10, 5 decreased by a number. Drew is n years younger than, younger than is going to mean subtract Joe, who is 9. All right, now these down here are going to mean um, addition. So you've got the sum of a number and 3. Now this could be written either n plus 3 or 3 plus n. Because of the commutative property, it says it doesn't matter the order in which you add. Now, notice that subtraction is not commutative. It does not have the commutative property. So the order that you put the numbers and um, things in matters, but here it really doesn't matter. Seven more than a number, a number plus two, a number increased by 8, add 9 to a number, Joe is 9 years older than Drew, who is N years old, and Jenna's salary is raised or increased by $120, so that means it's going to be added, the original salary plus $120. All right, so your book actually gives you more examples on um, the page that begins the lesson. I would encourage you to look over those and see and even maybe uh, write some of those in your notes so that you have that as a handy reference to um, flip back to. Sometimes it's easier to flip back in your notes than it is to find the lesson in the book and, and try to flip to it. All right, let's go to the next part of our lesson, which is decimal parts of a number. Now, this is just like fractional parts of a number, except that you're using decimals. So this says 32 hundredths of what number is. So if we want to set that up into an equation, we're going to say 32 hundredths of means times what number in is equals 24 and 32 hundredths. All right, now if I want to solve this, I'm going to simply, this has been multiplied here by n, I want to get rid of it, so I've got to divide by 32 hundredths. And that will get rid of this, and I'll have n is, and then you can just, for this, you can actually just use your calculator and solve, okay? The important thing is knowing that you're getting them set up correctly. All right, let's start our practice problems. Go to the next page. Okay, so practice problems. A says five times the sum of three times a number and negative five. 
All right, when you see the word sum, you know that means to add. This means times, so let's do this. Five times the sum of what? All right, if we're gonna add something and then we're gonna multiply it by five, I'm gonna put it in parentheses. The sum of three times a number, if I'm gonna have a sum, I'm gonna add plus negative five. And that's how I would write that. All right, in B, it says the product of. To get a product, I have to multiply the product of three and the sum of, so I'm gonna to have to add something, then multiply it by three. So here we're gonna go with the parentheses again. What are we going to add? A number and negative 50. All right, now another way I can write that, just so you know, is three times n minus 50. Now why can I just not put the, uh, the plus sign there, the addition sign? Because in algebra, it really doesn't matter. Um, because when you're adding algebraically, you're adding integers, which are positive and negative numbers. <clears throat> So n plus negative 50 and n minus 50 are the exact same thing. All right, and C, the sum of five times a number. Five times a number would be written 5n and negative 13. So I can either put plus negative 13 or I can put 5n minus 13. Okay? A little tricky but um, again if you if you have questions just just ask I'll be glad to help you. Alright let's do D. D says three times the sum of the opposite of a number. The op Okay a number would be n the opposite of n is negative n. So when you see opposite, that means negative, okay? All right, so three times the sum of, so I'm gonna add something, the opposite of a number and negative seven. That's how I'm gonna write that. Again, I could have put negative n plus negative seven, but it's gonna come out to the same thing. All right, go to the next page. All right, and we're going to have 16 hundredths of what number is. We're going to take those and we're going to turn them into uh, an equation. 16 hundredths times n and I don't even need the times because I know when they're side by side like that, that means to multiply, is 10 and 24 hundredths. And if this has been multiplied, the only way to cancel it out is to divide by, and then this is canceled out, n equals and again, I'm just going to let you do this on your calculator. Um, I'll, it, you should have it in your notes when, when I do a notebook check. Um, if you're doing this online, I still encourage you to take notes. But let's just get it started here. We know we've got to get rid of this decimal. So we've got to move it two places. We'll move this one two places and up. All right. So there you go. Go to the next one. In this one, it says what decimal part of 80 is 60? So what decimal of 80 is 60? All right, well, if I've got multiplied here by 80, then I'm gonna to have to divide by 80 to get this D by itself. And I just chose D because it stands for decimal. 
all right I'm going to divide by 80 on both sides that gets rid of it here and D equals 60 over 80 all right let's reduce that as a fraction I always think that's easier um, if we take this out it would be 6 eighths and 6 eighths um, is the same as 3 fourths and if you know your decimals and, and fraction equivalents, then you would know that 3 fourths is the same as 0.75 or 75 hundredths. Okay, so pretty easy. Let's go to the next one. All right, this one's set up a little differently again. This, is, this says 48 hundredths of 8 is what number? All right, you already have your variable here isolated by itself. So in this one, all you have to do is do the math. So 0.48 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 4 is 32 plus 6 is 38. 3.84 would be your answer. All right, I hope I haven't gone you, but if I have, just know that you can go back and watch the video over. You can um, pause and replay and all those good things. So um, hopefully it'll it'll be um, easy for you. But just remember on those words, the first part of the lesson, it can be tricky. So if you have questions, ask me or email me. Alright, and I will see you back next time for your next lesson.